Greetings, guys. Chris of VA Travels up here in the nation's capital. Going to be up here for the next three days. And my first stop is Ford's Theater. All right, guys, here we are. Ford's Theater. And they open in about 10 minutes. Before I go in, I'll give you some history on the building. The building was built 1836, and it was the second meeting house for the First Baptist Church of Washington. It stayed that way until 1861 when it was purchased by John T. Ford. He had it converted into a theater. It opened up August 1863. And then, of course, 1865, President Lincoln was assassinated. The interesting story I could tell you, after he was assassinated, it was turned into office space. And in 1893, 22 people died when a floor collapsed. So that's, uh, that's pretty tragic. Uh, 1938, it opened as a museum. And then 1968, it opened back up as a theater. So, all right, yeah, like I said, I've got a few minutes. So over here is the Peterson House where he was taken after he was shot, President Lincoln. Uh, yeah, died the next morning inside. And the Peterson House, this was built in 1849 by William A. Peterson. He was a German tailor. And uh, just the interesting uh, fact that John C. Breckinridge, vice president under James Buchanan, right before Abraham Lincoln, he rented this house out in 1852. Oh, 9.30, I thought they opened at 10. Maybe they are open. Let me walk across the street and just show you this plaque. I don't wanna get my shoes all wet and snowy, but here you go. April 15th, 1865 at 7.22 a.m. President Lincoln died. So pretty sad. That was put up in 1896. So let me walk across the street here. Oh, those are gasoliers, little gas lights in there. That's pretty cool. So, Ford's Theater. Let me see where you go in. 25 cents, huh? Okay, this is exit only. We got some serious construction going on. Across the street. Oh, there's Abe right there. All right, so it looks like the entrance is up here. Oh. A little Shop of Horrors is going to be playing in March. Okay, I thought they, like I say, I thought they opened at 10, but it looks like 9.30 it is. The Medal of Arts. All right, made it in here very crowded so I'll see what I can film and here's Booth 26 year old good looking charismatic actor and his co-conspirators here it is the Derringer the gun that killed Lincoln that's pretty crazy wow yeah didn't expect it to be that small 44 caliber. Wow, okay. Oh, here it is. Jeez. Pause and read. This is a reproduction of a canvas hood that was worn by the conspirators during their imprisonment. The only opening is, is a mouth hole. And here's the Bowie knife that Booth used to stab Henry Rathbone. I try to focus in on the topics that pertain to Virginia and yeah, visiting Richmond right after its fall, April 2nd, 1865. And slaves rejoicing as Lincoln arrives. Over here is that famous picture of Robert E. Lee was taken by behind the Stuart Lee house. I visited. Pretty 
pretty good statue of Lincoln. I thought he would be a little bit taller. And here we are on the stage of Ford's Theater. Union campaign poster. Lincoln and Johnson. It's a little dark in here. Lincoln's autograph right there. Down here, Winfield Scott. And this quilt was made for auction at the 1864 Sanitary Fair in Philadelphia. And I'm right in the middle of a swarm of office seekers. Looks like boss hog down here. Making sure he looks good. This is the first reading of the Emancipation Proclamation. Lincoln and his cabinet. Here's the uh, painting back here. Over here, the Surratt boarding house. And it's thought this is where the conspirators met to plan the assassination. So just a little three-story row house. Over here, the second inaugural address. The Great Rail Splitter. And it says Lincoln it shook over 6,000 hands. Over here, the long list of Union generals, <laughs> mostly weak generals. Yeah, if they would have had the Confederate generals, the war would have ended in 1862. Burnside. The snapping turtle, George Meade, and I thought Grant was a five-star general. Yeah, Lincoln was a master politician. I don't know if he was uh, our best president, but he was the best politician. And remember, his original war aim was to preserve the Union, not to end slavery. And uh, yeah, the Emancipation Proclamation, of course, was delivered during the middle of the war, January 1st, 1863. And half of that reason was to keep Europe out of the war. And bullets in his pocket, and there is no power on earth which can deny Artistic copy of the Emancipation Proclamation. In the United States. Okay, over here we've got some playbills. A Merchant of Venice, Hamlet. The Booth, Booth, Booth Benefit. Yeah, the Booth family were a big acting family. Julius Caesar, oh, John Wilkes Booth as Mark Anthony and Julius Caesar. And Lincoln, the Lincoln the critic. He held strong opinions about how Shakespeare should be presented. Okay, as I said, when I was outside, John T. Ford purchased the theater from the church. I uh, first turned it into a music hall and playhouse. It quickly burned down, and then it was opened as Ford's new theater, August 1863. And it looks like he had several, several properties around the city. Grand Opera House. There he is, an eerie encounter. Here we are, Matthew Brady photo, between 1862 and 1875. I guess they don't know exactly when it was uh, 
taken, and there's his father, a, we a well-known actor from England. Kind of looks like Sean Penn. Oh, uh, yeah, here he is in that Julius Caesar we saw the flyer on, and that's him on the left is Mark Anthony. There he is right there, determined look in his eye. making no attempt among his immediate associates to conceal his growing hatred of Lincoln. Mm. Here he is, Dr. Samuel Mudd. My name is Mudd. And even to today, there's still controversy on whether he was a conspirator. Here he is, little Mac, General George B. McClellan known as the Young Napoleon. Pretty good looking guy. I'm known as a great organizer, but too cautious for President Lincoln's liking. <laughs> Here he is again with his hand in his shirt. Okay, doing some reconnaissance here. Uh, General Grant came in to, to mop things up, 1864. And yeah, no matter what the uh, Confederates threw at him, he wasn't going to stop. Continued on to Richmond. Oh, letter from Lincoln to McClellan. That's pretty cool. Over here, some White House china and an oval platter. And if you guys want to see some good White House china, believe it or not, if you go to the Port Royal Museum uh, down there in Caroline County, Virginia, they've got a great collection. Uh, Prince of Wales bedroom, huh? Circa 1870. over here Lincoln and his family Willie Lincoln and Tad he got that name because he resembled a tadpole <laughs> and yeah wife Mary headed up to the theater here we go Oh, I've got a whole timeline. They're about to give a speech, so maybe afterward I can come back and read some of this. What he does is he controls the audience, and with everyone's eyes on him, he yells and says, Sick, Semper, Tyrannus! Latin for thus, always, to tyrants. Just finished the speech, and there it is the booth where he was shot. And those flags were draped there to celebrate Lee's surrender just days earlier. And I'm gonna walk up there, get a closer look. Yeah, a picture of George Washington up there. And that's exactly how it looked the night of the assassination. that bust over there. Another one over here, I'll just walk over real fast. There were 1,700 people in attendance. And Booth, who was familiar with the play, waited to the funniest part when he knew there would be a huge roar of laughter, and that's when he fired the Derringer. And he actually had that Bowie knife in his boot. Okay, guys, here we are. Close up to the booth. That's where he was shot. 
Yeah. And Booth got a spur caught in the blue flag. Landed, and they're not 100% sure they actually broke his leg here or when he was fleeing afterwards when a horse uh, may have fallen on top of him. But uh, ran to the middle of the stage, yelled Sig Semper Tyrannus. Virginia State motto. Yeah, it's a pretty nice theater. Pretty good plaster work right there. And uh, next stop, the Peterson House across the street where he died. Kind of creepy, here's his life mask. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so headed across the street. Mm. All right. Yo. There it is, Peterson House. Beautiful weather. All right, so yeah. This is where he was taken and passed away the next morning. Hmm. All right, I guess I'll just whip around. If you want some DC gifts, here you go, right across the street, and they are open. Huh. All right. Here we go. Yeah, I've already shown that. Cool. All right. Okay, so we're in Mary's waiting room. You're gonna have to pause and read. We will sell out. I'm in the Blue Crowd tour, so. Oh yeah. Oh man. Nice fireplace face. Hey, how are you? Here it is. Is it Edwin Stanton? Yeah. Gasolier up here. Uh, can't go upstairs. Oh, is this it? In this room, yep, Abraham Lincoln died 7.22 a.m. April 15th. Wow. Yeah. And I think I remember seeing my research, there are still blood stains on either the pillow or the, uh, or the blanket here. Pretty crazy. Wow, you almost get kind of chills. <laughs> okay, so I don't know where this leads, but here's the back alley. Might be it. Exit right there. So let me pause. Take a look. There he is right there. Yeah, and the doctors knew there was nothing they could do. Bullet, bullet went in between, behind his left ear and was uh, stopped just before his right eye. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's it. Oh, they've got the stairway. I apparently used to be able to go upstairs uh, because I've seen people uh, film it. But these are all books that have been written on. Abraham Lincoln. Tower of Books, 1922. 15,000 books. Ooh. Back into the wind and cold. One last shot. Ford's Theater. Hey guys, that was a really good tour. 
and I wish I was able to spend more time in there. But uh, anyway, all right, on to my next site. And uh, as always, like and subscribe. See ya.